Today in the Gospel, our Lord uses this image of a yoke. It's a piece of farming equipment and not so common nowadays. But it's worth reminding ourselves of what a yoke does. If you've got two cows or horses drawing a plough behind them, usually the animals are joined together with a piece of wood and the plough is then attached to that wood. By being joined together, they can draw the plough much more effectively, apparently four times more effectively. So if we zoom into the imagery, Jesus today is inviting us to join him in carrying the yoke. He begins the passage by saying, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened. He's saying, look, I know that you are carrying a lot of weight all by yourself. So come to me. Attach yourself to my yoke. Connect yourself to me and we can carry it together. And carrying all your burdens with me will be so much easier. That's the point. Life gets easier, your burdens get lighter when you partner your life with Jesus. It's a bit like if you are carrying a fridge or a heavy table all by yourself down the stairs. I wouldn't advise it, but sometimes you have to carry fridges downstairs. But if you're doing this, and then someone, like someone stronger than you agrees to take the bottom end, and then you're at the top, all of a sudden, things are so much easier. Being at the top, you're still definitely making a difference, keeping the fridge balanced and that kind of thing. But it's the guy at the bottom who's taking most of the weight. That's why Jesus tells us, my yoke is easy and my burden light. When we connect our lives to him, when we live every aspect of our lives in tandem with him, the quality of our life is changed. Being yoked certainly limits you in some ways. If two animals are yoked together, they have to go in the same direction. If they try and go in different directions, it doesn't work at all. The burden is heavier because they are fighting against the weight of the other one they're connected to. And it's the same with Christian discipleship. You only get the benefits of being yoked with Jesus if you are genuinely willing to go in the direction he is headed. Probably, if you are trying to be both connected to Jesus and at the same time go in a different direction, that's a hard life. All the constraints of being, you know, of being yoked to our Lord, but none of the benefits from it. When, you, when we, we get connected to Jesus through baptism, that's the moment we share the yoke with him. And the Christian life is then a kind of journey into the unknown. The best strategy we can have is to stay as close to our Lord as we can and then take slow steps forward in what seems to be the direction he is going in. The difficulty is we can't be certain of the direction he's leading us in. But he is joined to us. We are yoked to him. So the best strategy is not to fight him or second guess the direction, but strive to be in union with him. Remain close to him and then follow slowly the force of his direction, allowing him to show you gradually the right way to go. And that's something that's within the possibility of all of us. We don't know if just round the corner from us is willing, winning a prize in the 200 Club or if it's going to be some kind of tragedy. If it's a new job opportunity or a new struggle, a new worry. What we can do is do our best to remain as close to our Lord as we can. Then with every tentative step forward, we should say to him words like, Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. If you aren't fighting against the yoke, if you are keeping the commandments and practicing your faith, you can be sure that your direction for your life is the same as his direction for your life. I put in the newsletter the first few days of a very popular novena prayer. It is called the Surrender Novena. It's by a priest called 
Father Dolindo Rutolo, who lived in Naples, Italy, and died in 1970. He was a man who lived a life of exceptional suffering. Most of us would say he was plain unlucky, but he didn't see it that way. He understood that the direction Jesus was walking in was a strange one, not one he would have chosen himself. But he did choose intentionally to stay close to our Lord. And he wrote this Surrender Novena as an expression of this. Like I said, I put the first few days of the Novena on our newsletter. And if you start with those, you can then find the remaining days online. O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. O oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. As we repeat those words, we remind ourselves of who we are walking alongside. The one who is bearing the far, bearing the far heavier weight. Because remember, thanks to our Lord's death on the cross, there's a lot of stuff we don't need to carry around that we can definitively place on his side of the yoke rather than ours. I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things about going to confession is the experience immediately that follows the words of absolution. I know that those sins have disappeared. They no longer weigh down on my conscience. But the fact is, they didn't disappear, they were transferred. Jesus carried them on his shoulders as he bore the cross to Calvary and as he apologized to the Father for those sins with every fiber of his being. Oh Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. Most of us like to think we have our world under control. Maybe you're the kind of person who has micromanaged every meal for next week. Or maybe every few hours of your next day off. The surrender novena isn't easy. You are acknowledging at your very core you are tied to a yoke. Your life is not your own. From the day of your baptism, you are connected to Jesus. And that he has his own plan about the direction he wants your life to go. It's quite possible to reject our Lord's way, to break free from his yoke. Look around you, that's most of our society. But the only way to find the rest for your soul that our Lord talks about, to escape all the confusion of our world, all its competing ideologies and theories, is to cling to that yoke, to love that yoke that connects you to our Lord. Because whatever strange twists and turns he might wish to lead you through life, if you remain faithfully tied to him through thick and thin, then you make it to the final destination. You will save your soul and enter the place our Lord really wants you to be, to be with him for eternity. As Father Delindo shares in his meditation on one of the days, we are like children before God. Children that are carried by their father. And like any one-year-old, any little baby, we're pretty clueless to what our dad is up to. And we might cry and whine, but he's taking us where we need to go. It would be crazy for that little one to wriggle out seeking its freedom. As adults, our challenge is to resist those temptations. To cling as hard as we can to the yoke that connects us to our Lord. And in times of anxiety, to gaze back up into his eyes and say, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.